This is Digital Marketing Fastlane. This podcast will show you how to build, launch, grow, and scale a widely successful online business. Listen to real conversations with proven practical strategies and success stories. You're going to learn how to generate more traffic, more sales, more profit, and customer lifetime value for your online store. Coming to you from the online marketing experts at Boy Media, here's your host, Kevin Urrutia. Welcome to the podcast. Today we are, I guess it's a podcast, might even be on YouTube because yeah. we are reviewing a brand. Well, I think we did that last week and it was great. Yeah, so today we're going to be doing another brand review. The company that we picked for today is called Territory Foods. We have never heard about this brand until maybe 10 minutes ago, so really great candid uh, sort of review of their website and of course they're most importantly their Facebook campaigns. From our perspective, we don't have access to any of their data. So basically Territory Foods it's basically, it looks like a meal prep company. It says it's chef-made, craveable, delicious, healthy foods. And then they have a great call to action in front, which says place an order. Mm-hmm. It looks like they're Whole30 approved. And not sure. And it looks like uh, they don't use any, they're free of refined sugars. And they're gluten and dairy free. Interesting. Yeah. Do you use this type of stuff? Or um, I use, uh, cook a lot of own stuff lately. Wife cooks a lot. Uh, we used it a little. When this one Terry yeah, during her not this one but some one of these meal prep things that they send you and you know when she was in grad school or finals or she not cook as much so yeah no these type of meal prep companies are great I think it's a great business model um, just in general because mm-hmm. people are always gonna be too busy to cook I know for a while I was using another company in, in New Jersey it was called Eat Clean Bro mm, I've seen them I've yeah, seen yeah. the bags come to my building they're really popular here in, in the New York slash New Jersey area mm-hmm. but. I think so as a just as a business in general, I think it's a good idea. There's so many people that are always gonna be busy, they're always gonna want foods, and plus there's like a health kick going on where everybody wants to be healthy, look fit. Mm-hmm. And I still think for anybody looking healthy or getting fit, food's probably still one of the biggest hurdles of cooking and making it healthy. Yeah, there's always those memes on the fitness accounts like, oh, what people think is hard, going to the gym, and then what's actually hard, shows a bunch of healthy food. Just yeah. Like that. Because, I mean, like, if you think about it, like, if you look at a lot of these weight loss programs, they're just focusing on the food that you eat, not really the fitness aspect of it. And mm-hmm. people post about it, like, look, I just ate properly for 10, not 10 months, but I ate properly for one month and I lost 10 pounds. Mm-hmm. And there was no fitness there. And you still see that much bigger people losing weight without going to the gym just by changing their diet. So stuff like this is important. So it's really great that this brand is sort of making chef-friendly meals that are healthy because... There's probably some, you know, uh, meal kits out there that aren't as, as great. Yeah, absolutely. So you can obviously see a couple of like motivators and creative angles just thinking about that. I haven't looked at their ads that closely, but I hope they address or they might be addressing. You can just speculate from now. Do you want to look at the website a little more? Yeah, let's just look a little bit at the website. Like you said, I like the website already. It's very clean and simple. It has a really great value prop. And of mm-hmm. course, it says place and order. Yep. Food looks good too. It's yeah. The those pictures taste- of the food. It's probably interesting because I'm assuming they probably tested these foods. As I would assume they would test which of these meal kits looks the best. That way it looks appealing, right? The yeah. steak, shrimp. It looks like... The sweet potato, sweet potato. ice cream scooped sweet yep. potato looks interesting. That caught my eye immediately. Uh, looks like ice cream or sweet potato. Something I'd both like as a sweet tooth guy. So... And then they have the eggs for like breakfast. So I would assume, like, if I was them, or you know, they're they're probably testing this this sort of homepage or images. I right? imagine. I'm sure there's a Chrome extension that people looking at the YouTube are saying, "Oh, why don't you have this in your Chrome?" So or I can yeah. same way I have the Pixel Helper for some kind of CRO <laughs> tool. But I also really love that they have a chat bot button on the top bottom left. I think chat buttons are, work really great for brands, not not just newer but older brands, because customers do have questions. Absolutely. Um, and it's very low touch sort of help versus emailing. I'm not sure, like you probably have like some support. Sometimes you go to support, something like a Zendesk, and they make you like sign up for an account. And you're just like, oh yeah, my God, weird. this is so frustrating. I just want to email you an mm-hmm. issue. So chat is really great for that. And uh, Facebook chat, even a lot of customer service channels, they're opening up. It looks like here you can sign in with a social channel. That's interesting. Really good customer service can go a long way for client retention conversion rates. Yeah, especially if you're driving traffic to a website. Like, if customer has a question, why not convert them versus, like, having them email you? Mm-hmm. And, you know, getting someone to just do chat online isn't that expensive. It could be something that people just do. And also, like, a lot of these 
sort of chats just pipe into your Slack. So then someone can just answer the question really quickly. Yeah. And um, back in my old agency, it was an SEO agency. I don't know a lot about SEO, but I know a lot of the team there, they would say, oh, put an FAQ always on your headline. And uh, there's a lot of good SEO content there, but also it's just good for website optimization. People just answer a lot of questions that would otherwise be in a customer service chat. You can save a lot of time that way. Yep, exactly. And Google just came out with um, their FAQ sort of schema because, mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely it flows well. Uh, it flows almost like a really good landing page. Like if we were to send ads to this, if I was on this account, I feel pretty good sending them to this page as a landing page, as some call to action buttons. Um, they have this sticky bar. That's good. Good images. Looks like some quotes, some perceived user generated content there, social proof, good icons. Nice. A nice website. It looks like they have a lot of interesting things on the bottom of the website, on the footer, that you maybe you would want to see in the header or something like weekly menu or something interesting about that. Maybe they do have it. Oh, menu. Yeah, okay. Menu, but... Yeah, menu, weekly menu. Yeah. Okay, that's going to look rough on the <laughs> screen recording. I completely no, that first head. Right. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Yeah, that weekly menu, menu. Then I clicked on the menu. What were you on? Or... I'm looking at the menu as well. Kevin, I'm looking York. at a different screen for me. Of course, I clicked New York. I think this this is interesting because I'm looking at the menu for February 24th. I guess it's mm -hmm. delivered on February 24th. Interesting. But the first item is grayed out, and it says image coming soon. Ooh. Right? That's weird. I mean, why would you put the item up? Yeah, it's probably some technical mistake. Sorry uh, that we are putting this on the website. But anyway, it's just a yeah. user experience thing. That's interesting. The poor user experience, I yes. think. Which is, it's great that the, you're showing the users that this item is coming soon. Because, I mean, it, it'd probably be a thing that people want. But mm -hmm. maybe you show it in a different way. Maybe you put a little banner right underneath the date. It says, hey, look at the item coming soon. Because you're really taking up a lot of real estate for an item that you do have in stock that people can click on to add to their meal. Yeah. That's sort of where my, my yeah. sort of thinking is coming from. It says image coming soon. Um, the item looks, yeah, but even then, like, the item looks great out. I would uh, maybe subconsciously like, oh, I hope that wasn't sold out. Maybe. That's what I thought, I, too. Yeah, I didn't read image coming soon initially. I, I, read it, so I, I read it coming soon, but I thought it was sold out. Interesting. Okay, interesting. I really like the way these sort of uh, images are designed, product, I guess. They're essentially products or menus, essentially, where it's, like, the calories, the fats, the number of carbs, the protein, and I really like this, like, little red bar here. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. The little bar for the visual, perfect. It says the chef that made it, so you can see there's a human element there. Yep. Wow, interesting foods. That's cool. Big versatility. It does exactly what they say. It's like a whole foods, looks delicious, and it seems pretty healthy. Yes, yeah, cool. and then I like on the left side they have our meals are always free of refined sugars, mm. made with gluten-free, real certified, non-dairy, certified sourced, and freshly made. So it's like kind of just more proof of what, what they have and sort of yeah. why they should get this meal. Yeah, good and good use of otherwise empty space. Uh, maybe they would have three columns or I mean, two columns looks nice. But yeah, this would otherwise be empty space, as you can see on the right side of the screen. This is you know pretty nice. You could nothing crazy, nothing like uh, distracting, but just something kind of maybe subliminal if anything else. Yeah, one thing. So I clicked on a meal right, right and. One thing that's interesting on here is I can't find a way to order or add. I do see the place the order button. Maybe that's how they get it started. But yeah, like I would assume, like for example, with Eat Clean Bro, like mm -hmm. if I would click on something like this, it would be like add to your bag. I see what you mean. Or it's like, like the product it's kind of page. Like, it's kind of like you go to the e-commerce website and you have like, you know, a swimsuit and it's like, okay, start ordering now. But like yeah. there's no way to pick. Oh. Right, you see what I'm saying? I see what you mean. So instead of the one place, if there was a kind of a place in order button or order this on this exact. Add this to your, add this to your meal kit. Yeah. Remember the audit we did of the other account for Beauty Bay mm -hmm. where it's like. Oh, yeah. You know, add to your routine. Add right? to your routine right here. It's like add to your fitness, add to your sort of, you know, weekly yeah. plan. Add to your diet or whatever you want. Yeah, add to your diet. Yeah. You something, see like how, like, that. something like that. I think that's another optimization. Yeah. Good call to action. And you can get clever with the call to action name on the button and that starts that place the order thing that this place an order button probably gets you to sure that could be good yeah i would say that would be an optimization that would be good um because i think it's just like it's it's like a normal e-commerce thing to like add to something and mm -hmm. here there's no way to add and place an order means like okay I'm, I'm ready for this whole thing but someone might just be planning it out right their mm -hmm. kids for the week absolutely i clicked place an order i don't want to put my names and passwords on during the uh 
Loom recording. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm confused too. Like, it's already like kind of a barrier for me. I would love to just add things to the card. And also because oh. as a fitness person, maybe you want to know, hey, I, I got these seven meal kits. Here's the total amount of protein I'm getting for the week, total amount of macros I'm getting. That way you're ready to order. You say, okay, great. Like, I'm ready. I already have my full sort of meal planned out for me. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, because we work with some subscription boxes. Yeah. And they have a oh, add this collection here card or something. It's a more straightforward add to cart process. This seems like a more kind of unique add to cart process. Or, so that's interesting. All right, let's go back to the home page. Uh, I think it's in this tab right here. Oh, different page, but yeah, interesting. They got a lot of different diets: plant based, uh, ve- vegan, vegetarian. Interesting. Low carb, low fat. That's me. That I'm the no preference one. That's, that's what I would do. Keto reset. Interesting. All right, nice. So the website's interesting. Definitely has that less is more approach that I love to see in websites. So I Google for their food, territory foods, mm-hmm. and they have an ad up that takes to the landing page. Here we go. Promo.territoryfoods.com. Yep. Here we go. Interesting. My UTM. Yep. So you look at the UTM, it looks like they're running what? Google campaigns for their brand, right? Yeah. I like this. Uh, I like this. Even if you click the territory logo, it doesn't take you. The only button is the get started button or just a call to action button that they want you to do. Which is great. I mean, I go both ways on having the logo go back to the actual home page when you're doing the landing page because you really want them to do the action on that landing page versus mm. go home. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I always go back and forth on that one. But yeah. I usually lean towards no, the logo, you can't go home. Yeah. I, yeah. That's what I, I like that too here just so they don't bring into the website. They keep you on it. Yeah, they got the headline, the subheader, good image, call to action, very clear. Uh, if you listen to our landing page podcast episode, this is a good example of that. An interesting get fifty dollars off and start twenty twenty right. So yeah, the top of coupon. I'm interested here because something like this is branded keyword mm. search. Fair so enough. you need to give users that might be searching for you already a discount. Mm, interesting. It could be this could be a great front end offer for brand new people that have never heard of your stuff. Because I would assume, like, I know for sure customers are seeing this, clicking on it, and then and then going to your customer service reps and being like, hey, I saw you have a $50 discount. Can I also get it too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I see what you mean. It does say first two weeks, so maybe there's some rule there's to sign rule, up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but I can still see people. The reason why is because with our own brands, we see that too. Yeah. So I mean, if I'm doing this, I'm making a separate email address or doing the plus sign email yeah. to get that extra $50. <laughs> yeah, because I know people are going to, I know people, the thing is people are going to ask for it because they know that customer service is like, it's going to be more of a pain to say no. Yeah. Also, if it converts highly, they're profitable, uh, I'm sure. Um, same image, so that's interesting. Maybe they did test it and it's doing well. It's on the landing page. If you, you look in their ads, I think they had a really diverse amount and a lot of variety of images, so good. they got some benefits here. See your local menu and their call to action. They say the diet, so interesting little carousel, it looks like, of different diets. Yeah. Different, that's cool. Some variety. Right, this one. It shows the different diets. You can eat keto, low-carb, Mediterranean, paleo, plant-based, and whole 30. Yeah, and what I do like of this carousel <coughs> is you click one arrow and all three change, where it's not just like a moves constantly. So it requires less clicking, and it, each one is different diet style. I like that a lot. Yeah, I like, I like makes it. sense really with like the yeah, it makes sense with the rest of the uh, choose meals ter- dietary preferences. That's cool. I like that a lot. I like the how it works. Very simple, clean. Choose your meals. Our chefs make your meals and then they deliver. And why choose it? Oh, easy, personal. Nice. Some more benefits. Even the why choose is this is great for ad copy or sort of ad ideas or angle mm-hmm. ideas. Yeah, and if you scroll down here, um, our meals are always you know really good stuff. They mentioned earlier. But pr- then there's pricing, so that's good to know. Starting at nine ninety five a meal, and then the number of calories is interesting as well. And then if you scroll further down, you see our food unfiltered, and that's where social proof comes in. And it's kind of there's a couple humor, like um, I guess some humor, some realism, or something, <coughs> whatever you want to call it. Jenna twenty five California, plant based, hates mushrooms. You know she has her review. Then you want to hate cilantro over here, keto. So that's pretty cool. And they have a video, interesting. From a technical standpoint, I like it. It's very simple and clear. It's easy to replicate and for a lot of brands. If you like this, you want to do this style. I like it a lot. I like how they do the subtitles. A lot of brands just put whatever words, but they make it look really nice. Uh, nice. Good little – it kind of comes off as user-generated content. It might – even though it might be acting, I'm not sure. 
couldn't tell, but um, yeah, it's it, it was great rigid video and just it's really great because they have all the elements that we like to see in a landing page: mm -hmm. clear, concise reviews, really great photography, and user generated content of some sorts. Yeah, it's really good stuff. So this is a really good and landing a page. Uh, yeah, of yeah. course, you got that discount. Maybe that does help convert top funnel traffic. Yeah, so if you're looking for a good landing page example, uh, if you're listening to our other landing page podcast, and this is a good example. Yeah, uh, just exactly. literally Google them and click the first ad that comes up, and that's a good landing page example. Okay, let's look at their ads now. Let's Absolutely. See. And we'll see what landing pages their ads go to. Maybe yeah. it comes to the same landing page. Maybe the same or different. Move we don't this know, tab yeah. over here. Okay, so I'm looking at their Facebook page right now. Okay, they have over 22,000 likes, and it looks like they're based out of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And the last post was 20 hours ago, organically. So they're active on Facebook. So let's look at their ads right now. It looks like they have joined our team, some ads. Maybe they're recruiting. That's cool. How do you feel about sending Facebook ads for recruitment? I think it's a great ad. I mean, we do, you do a lot of ads for recruitment. So they yeah, work, I mean, yeah. I have some like blatantly like their recruiting companies yeah. ads. Um, that's that's fair. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you do ads for recruitment. Yeah, it's interesting yeah. though. You have other campaign. They have a lot of it though. Like, it's an, or maybe it's an affiliate ambassador program for affiliates. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's an ambassador program. Yeah, I just I just read the first line. Join yeah. our team. So. so, but I think what you're saying proves a great point. Whereas sometimes with advertising, you're reading the image, not the copy. Mm. Right. So. I think that we can sort of see, hey, look, this is why it's important that your image has copy. That makes sense because you literally saw it join our team and you're like, oh, I don't want to work for them. So I didn't say that, but I know what you mean. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I thought, oh, employment. Uh, yeah, you see you employment. Yeah. So you want to use lingo that people are used to or are using in everyday life. Because mm -hmm. when someone's like, hey, do you want to join my team? They should think like probably join your company or something like that. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's, I think that's a great sort of thing that we just found right now. Yeah, and it's also, I started acting. I opened my mouth about something I didn't even read as enough, I, only because I, I just looked at the first, the, the big the big words <coughs> in the image. Yeah, and that's, um, and that's sort of what people are doing on Facebook every day. Yeah. They're just looking at stuff and like, oh my God, this is actually interesting. And, yeah. Aesthetically, the ads are great, though. They look great. Very nice images. Uh, I can see it catching my eye, the you know, popping colors, the text. They're good with that, I got to say. So we've done ads for meal kit plan companies before. And these type of images and ads work really well. Awesome. It's really popping colors that stick out, that show the food. Mm -hmm. So we've done this before. It's interesting that they, they're only running, not only running, but like a lot of their images are video, or a lot of their ads are images. So. Yeah. I imagine they've tested a lot. It looks like they have a lot of ads up. So, so as you scroll down more, you see more um, ads for something else. So here's one, the first one that comes up. Um, this looks like almost a card abandonment ad or something. Uh, someone signed up. It reads as leave a meal behind, question mark. Go oh. ahead, try it out. If you don't love it, get your money back. There's no hassle. That's interesting because it's a secondary value of a uh, you know, money back guarantee. And it says leave a meal behind. Those are great ads, those bottom of the funnel. That's good that they're doing that. So you can tell they're probably taking a multi, a full funnel approach, which is a huge step for a DDC brand. Especially yeah. in Facebook ads. No, yeah, this is definitely a middle of the funnel ad. Also, what I like is when you click on this ad, the coupon code Healthy Meals automatically gets applied. Yeah, that's good. So we always say this is a great tactic for any sort of discount, especially during the holiday season. Mm -hmm. Whereas the code is you have a banner that says, hey, your code's been applied. Yeah. And then you have it automatically discount. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I know websites like Shopify plugins that do this, but it's easier than customers having to fumble through and type in a code. Also, it's because then if the code doesn't work, your customer service reps are going to get emailed and message, hey, my code's not working, my code's not mm. working. So it's like frustrating. And we, with the brands that we have here uh, in-house too, we always get these sort of messages during the holidays. Absolutely. And let's peep the landing page again. It looks like this is the home page with a discount code. How do you feel about bringing uh, bottom funnel traffic to something like the home page as, as opposed to some sort of cart page or something like that we've tried? Oh, I don't, see, the thing is, this is why that, that sort of thing is confusing, because the a person might not be logged in, yeah. so there's no cart. That's true. If they're logged in, it might be different. We you can try thing, Like I, I don't think they know if you're logged in, so they're going to take you to where you think you're going to go. Okay. Where it's like a, like, kind of like a cart for now, for like like e-commerce brands that we work with, the cart's always like saved like temporarily, mm -hmm. where here, they technically have no cart, you know, unless they actually place an order, but then... I guess technically they could be logged in, right? If they're using like a logged in cookie, but mm -hmm. yeah, I know what you're saying. I would take them to a cart. Yeah. Yeah. I would do like a slash cart or like that. 
But Eric, I'm not sure if you noticed this. They're doing something pretty interesting. So I'm looking at ads or website. The ads. I'm looking at. Let's see. Do you see the ad that has like the meal? Whoa, that's not a really good description. But our food speaks for itself. No gimmicks. No no subscriptions. You can't get out. Can't, mm. You can't get out of. No funny business. Pink see background. The pink background. Yeah, the pink background. Yeah. So if you hover over the URL, you look at your URL bar. You see it says territoryfoods.com forward slash R equals F B Wow 30. So that's mm-hmm. a discount code. And it says and headline equals well being served weekly. And CTA equals pick your meals. So what they're doing here is dynamically inserting content from the ad to test on their landing page. So if you mm-hmm. click on that, the content on the landing page actually changes to those variables. Oh, I see that. Wow, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, I knew you would like it. I, was, yeah. I saw it and I was like, oh, whoa, this is crazy. Yeah, I knew you can do some fancy stuff with these UTMs, but, uh, you know, learn something new every day. So oh, Kevin knows this stuff a lot more than me. So. Yeah. I mean, for me, I saw it and I was like, they got to do something here. Uh, like, you know, like programming and stuff like that. Nice. But this, at least for me, this tells me that whoever's running the di- digital here, they're like, they know what's going on. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. I was like, isn't that crazy? It's close to go, whoa, this is pretty smart. I think this is smart. I wonder how we can sort of do that here too, right? Yeah, that'd be interesting. Especially, this is great because, like, honestly, like, if any brand, if you can, these probably elements, the ones that they're testing, are probably some of the most important ones. Mm-hmm. Headline, probably that sub headline, and then the CTA. Yeah. So and this is great for creative testing. Um, you can have different angles, um, right there, different landing pages for, for that correspond to the different angles. That could be an efficient way to do it instead of building out several different landing pages. Yeah. Nice. I like the ad to the direct right of it is just like a UGC tweet. Whenever Territory Foods makes home feel like a restaurant, uh, Jenny's Ice Cream does that a lot. I, definitely in the organic posts. I haven't checked their ads in a while. Yeah, no, I, I really like this sort of tweet. Um, we see, you see this a lot of brands when they're posting like their reviews. Like SaaS companies do this a lot when they have like, a, oh, I can't live without Dropbox, blah, 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 right? And then you see like a, a whole wall of tweets because it shows that someone's tweeted about it or talked about it versus like, some testimonials, it's like, oh, they told me it, but like, this is like a public endorsement of a Twitter of a, of a tweet that you can actually go on their account and check. Nice, yeah. Something interesting also about this ad is there's no body copy, which I'm actually not mad about. Mm-hmm. We've seen that do really well before, especially in ads that have a good amount of text in them. Nice. And that one's probably a retarded ad, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that makes sense. Anyways, from what, what we're seeing here with Tartar, they're also doing a lot of awareness campaigns. So if you scroll down, Eric, you see an ad that's for a Mediterranean diet, mm, the Mediterranean diet okay. and, and that's a and that's a blog post. So they're probably driving traffic to sort of an advertorial sort of or or article landing page in order to get people to read about the diet and sort of pick their stuff. Yeah, the landing page brought me to benefits of a keto diet blog. That's interesting. Yeah, that one, yeah. The ad oh, says Mediterranean. Anyway, yeah. Oh. Okay, so yeah, that's a mistake on their part then. Dang. Anyway, but yeah, I get the idea. You lead them to a blog post, and you know this is great. You educate them on different diets. And then in the bottom, if you see, if you see scroll down, you see that there's a bunch of like links to their uh, products and their menus. Yeah, absolutely. I would like maybe a little more aggressive, uh, not aggressive, but you know some call to action button uh, somewhere easier to get on the site, especially if you're lo- using it as a landing page. Uh, you can monetize it just simply making couple landing page optimizations to the blog post but nothing too obvious obviously you want to you want it to come out as just value adding content but you know there are ways to monetize it in a very tasteful way yeah they have really great videos here so they're definitely doing a lot of great stuff that DTC brands should be doing yeah i can see um you, obviously they have a couple different i guess funnels for lack of a better word uh they're bringing content to the blog posts mm-hmm. i see they have the vegan or plant-based angle uh, cafe territory and cafe gratitude match made in plant based heaven. That's pretty cool. They also have gifting angles. So they have a. I mean, if you scroll down, right, there are ho- holidays are here. You deserve the gift of health. Gift nice. of so they're doing like every angle. We always pick brands that are doing everything for. <laughs> yeah, this is a good brand. No, <laughs> seriously, this is a good brand. I'm going to look at them more for ads. I like this one. We heard you. You wanted lower carbs. I like. I like starting. An ad copy out with We Heard You. It's pretty powerful, especially if it's a retargeting one, obviously. It's a pretty good ad, too. Yeah, their videos are nice. Uh, you can tell um, they're professionally made, good designer, and you can tell there's thought behind the, I guess, the order of the different parts. Nice. 
Yeah, I really like their blog posts. They're really nurturing content. I don't think the reason why I like them is like a company like this. You know, we talk about it. They really understand their customer. They understand their LTV, and they mm-hmm. understand that not everybody's going to want to buy from you that first time they see an ad. And mm-hmm. having great content on your blog really establishes trust and also gets people used to your brand or your name on the internet. Mm-hmm. And I don't think enough brands do that. They don't want to be promoting blog posts, articles. But blog posts and articles need to be thought out, of course. But like it's acquisition. You need to sort of get people on your platform, get people on Facebook, just get them to know about that sort of problem or solution that they have. Yeah. Um, how would you maybe put this in ad campaigns? If Maybe I'm running all conversion campaigns. Uh, I have a lot of top of funnel conversions. So I'm thinking, all right, I want to put my ad dollars in top of funnel conversions. I'm getting it. Uh, retargeting is good as retargeting you know, can often be. Um, how would you, would you put a traffic campaign or something and retarget that traffic campaign? For like an article? Yeah, uh, retarget those URLs. Uh, I would still do conversion campaigns because it's okay. still super top of the funnel. But even even for a blog post, you want to do conversion campaigns because then you, you have your links that's going to eventually lead them to uh, like a meal. For example, if they have an article, the links lead them here to uh, meal kits. Understood. Educate Educating the users. Top of the funnel is super important. I think brands need to do that as well. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and like the copy for this is like, you need to hold 30. Here's what you need to know. Mm-hmm. So... I'm assuming this is a little bit of, like, it, it's like tra- like it depends on what this article is. This article is for like brand new people, but it could also be for you know Eric. You know, it could be this could be retargeting for people that visit their like slash whole thirty mm-hmm. URL, and then they're like, sense. oh, this person's interested, but they didn't buy. Mm-hmm. Let's educate them now on that sort of meal. Uh, keep yourself on track with tasty meals gone too fast. They have a lot of ads. Like, yeah, they're running a lot of ads. Um, a lot of. Especially few recently too. 140 ads. The gift of health sale, good. Yeah, and they're just doing US, so they're just a US-based company. Yeah, a lot of variety in the ads, which I like to see. You can tell they're trying a lot of different looking creatives. Obviously, they're sticking to their branding and their language, which is awesome, but they're trying different angles. They're trying the still images. They're trying the face down, I guess, 90 degree looking at the table, which is awesome for food in general. And, you know, they're trying videos, different graphics. Nice. Yeah, I mean, Boxes. I'm thinking these sort of, so that if you scroll down, there's these ads that they started on December 26th, mm. and it says, um, get $50 off your first two weeks, a fresh start to 2020. And that's sort of like the, the like the discount, and then underneath that, they have a review testimonial. Mm. And they have that for a few ads, discount, testimonial, and then, you know, save time. You know what they're also doing by starting their New Year campaigns right after Christmas is that week 52 low CPM benefit. They probably did really well this week. They're also still have it running in February. Oh, it's probably good. And yeah, yeah. we have a yeah we have a few uh, on those accounts. We just listen if you have something that is good. You know, we we had a, I think we had an account running Black Friday ads like well into the spring because they just kept converting well. They're profitable. So if something's profitable, you know, just keep it running no matter how weird and irrelevant it might seem. Yeah, exactly. It still works, yeah. What type of ads aren't they doing? I don't, I don't think um, they're doing any messenger ads, right? Not like send to messenger? Yeah. Uh, we don't do that a lot ourselves. Um, from a list building perspective, uh, that's an interesting one. They don't, they don't really do too many carousel ads either. I haven't seen a lot of carousel. I mean, it looks like they have so many ads in, that all started within like 60 days. So I imagine they've done a lot of testing over the last few months and even years. So I imagine if they're not doing something, it is more calculated. I see a carousel ad here. Um, it's interesting. <laughs> it's a smart carousel too. Uh, it's like a one, you know, one card is keto, one says paleo, one says plant based. So that's interesting. Yeah, and another cool. thing you can tell they're doing all placements here for all their ads. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, it's going to help them lower their CPAs. No, I, I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, definitely, if you're looking at, you want to get look at some creative variety, high volume of creative, look at different angles and even different landing pages. Uh, check out Territories, Facebook ads library, and maybe keep them up. See, you know, as time progresses, you see how their ads change, maybe what they're testing and what works, what doesn't work. Yeah, that's it. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for listening today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email Eric at Boy Media or Kevin at Boy Media or just check out uh, boymedia.com. Or Wilson at boymedia.com would be the primary one. 
All right. No, it's fine. You can email Eric. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. This week's episode of Digital Marketing Fastlane was brought to you by the performance marketing experts at Voy Media. Join us again next time as we'll be bringing you more tips, techniques, and know-how to make your online business the very best that it can be. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, we'd love to hear them on Twitter at Voy Media. Thank you.